Yeah, yeah, carry on, carry on, no problem. Okay. Uh, now, I'll be speaking about beekeeping. Huh? Uh, we can do beekeeping. We can do beekeeping in uh, commercially. This is and very unidirectional. You will okay. have to hold it very close. Okay. Sorry. So beekeeping can be done at home in your garden, uh, wherever space you have. Uh, now we are. If we talk about uh, beekeeping, we have different kinds of. Uh, bees which I'll be explaining to you. First we have the Dasota bees, rock bees. You may be seeing a big, uh, big you hive hold it for five minutes. on the buildings. On the buildings. Uh, they are the rock bees, they are dangerous bees. They cannot be commercially kept in boxes. You cannot keep them in boxes, uh, that species. Then we have Apis floria which are garden bees. You just see one small kind of uh, cone stuck to a branch of a tree. The Epis floria, they are garden bees and they, they, they too cannot be domesticated in boxes like that. Now the ones that can be uh, kept in such boxes are Epis serena indica, locally known as Satodemus. Satodemus, uh, maybe it's Started from Satari or which place, or they have seven tones or what not, I don't even know. But they are known as Saturday in Goa and Maharashtra. Hmm? This place is. Generally, they make multiple codes from six to eight to ten. Now, any number of six to eight parallel codes, huh? not only one. And their habitat is in semi dark places or dark places, maybe cavities, holes. They are not outdoors, so you won't see them, you know, in a bright place out, outside. Maybe you will see them in your meter box or certain areas which is semi dark, or toilet area which is semi dark, no too much of light. That area they may come and do their hike, you know. But generally they are wild bees. We normally capture them and put them in certain boxes. So basically we have a box like this. This is supposed to be a ISI A standard box. Generally there are many types of boxes which different suppliers supply. So you have to be very careful when you go in for your boxes. Say you bring a, uh, you bought a 6 frame box and next time you plan to buy an 8 frame box to get your frame from one box to another one frame and you will be in trouble. So generally we have to use one standard box. And now for Goa region that is Karnataka, Maharashtra and Goa they have set a standard of ISIA boxes. These boxes are easy to manufacture in Goa itself if you have a good computer, provided he does a good job of yours because the measurements have to be quite accurate. Uh, now, if you have noticed in this box, we have a round chamber which is a brood chamber. Okay. So this brood chamber is a bigger in size. You have bigger frames. Huh? Generally the queen will be in this down box when we keep it. Huh? So basically we have a frame like this where we have honey stone on the top part, pollen in the middle and the down portion are the root, eggs, lava, pupa and adult bees. So whenever you are going to see, you have to check various things 
what is going on in this area. Now I have eight frames here. Generally, when I get a box like this, a supplier supplies me. He will supply me four to five frames. Then that's the normally what they do. Unless you want eight frames full, he'll charge you like more more cost for you. Because generally it's that way. So basically in this I have a down board. This is my down board. It is the mirror of the hive. Why I say it's a mirror of the hive? Because generally the droppings would fall on this from the hive. Can show me the indications what is going on in the hive. Huh? Now, if I see some, uh, uh, the cone is made of of a kind of wax secretion from the bees. Now, if I see the droppings down here of the wax, that should give me an indication there's some problem in my colony. There's either wax not attack my colony or something is wrong because wax cannot be droppings here on my board. Now if I see any uh, tunnels built up here, I know it's a tunnel built up by some wax board. Because if anyone comes in, it will enter to the down portion because this is the entrance of the field. This is a queen gate which allows only the worker bees and the drones to go out. The queen cannot go out. So generally the wax moth enters to this and starts laying its eggs here. And through this part it will go up to the main hive. And when it goes, when my colony is weak, if my colony goes weak, that's the time I will get attacked by the wax moth. Hmm? Generally, this is the major problem in Goa where we have the wax moth. Second problem we have is the wasps. Wasps are kind of big, uh, what we call them locally, ganjil, you know. Yeah. They normally come and literally take the bees, catch the bees next to the hive or next to the colony and they will feed their young ones. And generally a vast hive is like a big white color ball. If you see it, it's supposed to be in the jungles. Now it's come to our city areas also, unfortunately. So when I have this box like this, okay. If I have four to five frames, these are known as frames, huh? frames, brood frames, brood means the egg frame, full, what I will do is, I use a divider board, divider board to, there is a purpose of using this divider board, it is to, the hive requires a kind of temperature to keep the eggs in the position like warmth. So if the warmth is not enough, they have to fan themselves, the bees. They spend more time on fanning and you know, instead of going out and getting nectar and pollen. Nectar and pollen is the main source for the bees. Nectar is converted into honey and pollen is a protein to feed the queen and the babies. Without this source, your colony will never develop. So you should have enough of nectar and pollen in your surroundings. Huh? Generally the honey what is got in Goa is multiflora honey. Because it doesn't belong to one kind of tree. When I say one kind of tree is like if you have a big plantation of sunflower, then you may get only sunflower honey or you have a certain kind of tree many trees of soap nut or whatever it is jamur or anything then you may get a kind of flavor of that 
flour for your honey. But generally in Goa we have mix. For pollen, there is not too much of problem in Goa because we have lots of coconut trees. Nectar is the main problem which we need, which we need for the bees. If they don't get nectar, they signal to the queen, which the queen will signal all the bees to desert the hive and go away because there is no food. At that time, the beekeeper, being a beekeeper, you should be able to lift up your frame when you are checking, see the stores of your honey on the frame. If there is no stores of honey and pollen on your frame, you need to feed your bees with a supplement. When I talk of supplement, it says, especially in rainy season, when we don't have, the flowers don't flower, we need the, the, to give them a kind of, we normally take a small bowl where we put one part of sugar and one part of water. One part meaning in volume, you take half a cup of water, the same amount, you put it in a uh, honey, sufria, you slightly heat it up and stir it till it melts. You have not to uh, heat it too much, it has to just dissolve. Generally what I do is, I take, I boil the water first and when, when it's cooling down, I will add sugar to it and stir it and once it's dissolved completely, the same thing, I'll put it in a bowl, put some husk, coconut husk, so that the bees don't get drowned when they go for the feed. Because you have a bowl like this, a flat bowl, sanon, what we make sanna, that kind of piri. Huh? In Konkani, I hope everyone is understanding English, huh? as I will speak in Konkani also. Huh? So basically you do that. Hmm? So basically why we need bees? We need bees because they cross pollinate the fruit of yours. You get more yield of your fruit. The quality of your fruit improves. The quality, the size of your this, the texture, the, the taste also, it improves with good pollination by the bees. Now when I say bee, bees are the, not only the pollin, pollinators of the fruit, there are other birds which can pollinate, there are other bats which can pollinate, there are certain kinds of insects which also help in pollination, but bees also play a major role in our pollination of our, of our environment. So we need to save our bees, whichever are there. There's another kind of species of bees which are stingless bees. Very you, small ones. Very small ones, yeah. They normally, we keep them in very tiny boxes, you know. Maybe half the size of this, with a shorter this, you know. Or maybe on bamboos, bamboo shoots. You may just block the both sides and a small opening is there. Right. Now these bees, stingless bees, they are honey is medicinal. Very medicinal, though you get a small quantity of honey. You will get just about 250 grams per season. Huh? Whereas for this kind of uh, boxes, if your area is good, you should get 5 to 8 kgs. Huh? If your area is good. Now if you are doing in uh, uh, like city areas or where there are no much trees and all, I could say you will get 2-3 kilos per year, which is a normal thing, you know. Provided you maintain it. Huh? There is a few, uh, normally we conduct about 2-3 days minimum courses, which we can give you an outline how to maintain the boxes, how to go about with these boxes how to get over the fear of the bees, you know. We, will, uh, we, can, we, we can show you all. But that is a one, two days course. Now, since the time is short, I'll just go roughly how to go about with the beekeeping. You know? Now, when you get honey, we have a super chamber which is on to kept on top of this, 
the frames are a bit smaller in size. And normally the bees will only make honey on this. Normally the queen generally doesn't come up to lay eggs. When I say the queen doesn't come up to lay eggs, is you have to give enough spacing for the queen to lay eggs down. If your cones are not suitable, you can make out uh, are not suitable for the queen to lay eggs. Means they go uh, get uh, brittle or the you know after the it's uh, you know used up a lot by the bees or with the heat, it is generally becoming blackish in color. You know. So that time we have to do cone renewal. Uh, cone renewal is another process where you shuffle the cones from sidewards to the middle to allow them to make new cones so that the queen has more space to lay eggs. So that we explain in detail during our training how it is done. Generally this frame, I brought a small cone that is just harvest yesterday. This is a live cone, you know, how, how the bees make it. Generally, they'll make, make cells of hexagon uh, shape and they'll cover the full area. And this full area gets covered. Normally, what they do is they will seal it totally. Seal it. See, if you see, there's cappings here, white cappings. Huh? Once the cappings are about 80 to 90 percent on the frame, it's ready for harvest. Generally, what they do, they keep on storing the honey in the cone, cone cells, but that contains lots of moisture. So the moisture has to be reduced to 20 percent or 22 percent for it to remain for long time. So once it reaches that temperature, that, uh, that consistency, the bees start sealing it up. That gives us an indication it is ready for harvest. Now some commercial beekeepers try to harvest it before it's sealed also. But generally then we have problems with the honey. Honey doesn't remain for a long time huh? because of the moisture. Hmm? So, Generally what we will do, we will uncap it. We will just take a blunt, a sharp knife and we will just remove the top cappings of the, slice it off, huh, of the cone. And we have an extractor like this, which we will put on it and with the centrifugal force, all the honey will come off and the same cone can be reused in the hive bag in the box pack, in the super. Now why we can do it normally before in ancient times there were no extractors and all. The beekeeper would squeeze it, destroy the comb, allow the bees to make new comb. Now it is a time consuming. Secondly, the bees have to consume lots of honey to secrete the wax. So generally to make a cone like this of a full box, they will have to consume at least 4-5 kg of nectar. So it's a big, big amount, big amount. So generally if we can get about 4 harvests in a season, we will get only 1 harvest if we do this, 1 or 2 harvests. Secondly, what we do for this is we have a foundation sheet which are made of wax, pure wax, which we use as starters for the bees to generally build their cones quickly and straight. As well, they tend to, you know, make it uh, crooked, touch the other frame, go into the frames of each other. So once you have a uh, the straight. Actually, I don't have. I really don't know because I'm not putting. Okay, I don't have it here. It is a strip which generally gives them the idea how to do it in a straight line. Because if they start sitting on it, they will do it basically in one line. Another thing is, 
for this ISI standards what they have built up. Normally we put a small iron uh, SS stainless steel wire for this frame. This is to give support for the cone what they have built. And secondly, even if you put a starter strip here, what I'm talking about the, for the bees to make it straight, they will join the starter strip to this right down and your cone will be straight and strong enough. So when you lift up this frame, you get it straight, first thing, and it's strong. So even if while sending, handling this frame, by checking, if you tilt it even slightly, it won't fall off. Otherwise, it has a tendency with the way to drop off your frame. So, we have a kind of smoker what we use when we handle the, the, the maintenance of the hive. So, what we will do is, in this we put kato, husk of coconut, Mm -hmm. We fill it up, we light it up, we shut the fire, we allow it to smoke and then you have a pump here at the back which you pump it and generally you give a, a few puffs in front of the colony and at the side of the colony and you start your work. Now if we talk about colonies, there are different types of colonies, different kind of behaviors of bees. Some will be calm bees, some will be aggressive bees. Hmm? So maybe I can handle a beehive without my veil, without my gloves. But generally you have to wear your veil what you have and gloves when you do your maintenance work for your safety sake. Huh? There are people who will show you magic like you know they handle the bees this way that way and what not please don't try the stunts if you don't want to get stung by a bee huh? so my advice is that so so we have this now and uh, and uh, We have products like this which we have, which is bee wax. Bee wax is made of the cones. Now whatever cones what gets spoiled, which the bees cannot use. We will collect it all together. We will put it in water. We will double boil it you know, on a heater. Double boil it means not a direct heat to the, to the thing. If double boil, I'll explain in simple terms. A big honey you take, a sufria, and you put another smaller one with it. You put little water in it. Uh, and you don't give direct heat, you give indirect heat. How you heat up chocolate and all that. Uh, and you put this in water. All the extracts uh, of the cones, whatever you get. Like this cone, after I remove honey, I can put it all together in a, this. When I do that, I will allow it to melt. Normally what I will do, I will take a cloth and I will put all this wax in the cloth. You know, and I will dip it in the water. So if there is anything which 